Hello, this is Dr. Hassan with Innovate, and this is lecture number 63, Reduction of State Tables Using the Partitioning Method of Chapter 9, Design of Synchronous Sequential Networks of the Course Digital Logic Design or Digital Systems or Digital Electronics. This is a disclaimer for you to read. I cite three references in digital logic design. However, there are many books related to, the, to this course. In Chapter 9, we talked about the derivation of state graphs, then we talked about practical applications to show you the importance of the design of sequential sequential networks that can replace very complicated microcontroller circuits. And then we are talking about the reduction of state tables. Then we will talk about state assignments and implications. In the state table reduction techniques, we talked about state table reduction by inspection, then by using the merger graph, then by using the implication table. And the last method to be used is the partitioning method. The partitioning method is another technique used to reduce state tables for both completely, completely specified and incompletely specified finite state machines to their minimal forms. The advantage of this method over the implication table technique is that it can reduce state tables when we deal with finite state machines having even larger number of states without the need of drawing a large implication table. The partitioning method is based on two definitions. Definition number one, state SI and SJ of a finite state machine are K equivalent if for every input sequence of length k, the machine generates the same output sequence starting from either state j or state i or state j. Definition number two, a partition pk of a set states in a finite state machine is a partitioning of the set of states that blocks such that to blocks such that the states in a single block are all k equivalent. If the block has only one state SI, then SI is an unequivalent state to any other state in the set of states. Based on these two definitions, the partitioning method involves the successive determination of partitions, PK, for K0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. For an state finite state machine in which each PK is composed of blocks and each block consists of one of more states. The state given within one block of PK are all K equivalent. Guidelines from P0, where all the states of the finite state machine are placed in a single block, we will form P0, then we will form P1 where all the states in a single block are one equivalent. The one equivalent states are obtained directly from the state table of the finite state machine as two or more states are one equivalent if they have non-conflicting outwards. So if they have non-conflicting outward, they will be one equivalent. From P2, we will form P1. We will form P2 from P1, where the state SI and SJ are grouped together if one block in one block, if SI and SJ have one equivalent next to states or all possible input sequences or successors are one equivalent. Now, now we form PK plus one from PK in general, where states SI and J as SI and SJ are grouped together in one block if SI and SJ have K equivalent next to states for all possible input sequences or successors and are k equivalent and are k equivalent. Repeat step four until no change occurs from pk to pk plus one or pk plus one is equal to pk. Each block of the final equivalence partition represents a set of equivalent states. So this is the algorithm to be used to determine equivalent states and we will apply it to a real example. To illustrate the partitioning method for the completely specified finite state machine, 
we will consider the mole state table shown. We have a state given here with a state A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So we have a total of seven states with next state and with the outputs. So P0 will contain all the states in one block. Therefore, P0 will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G between parentheses. The next partition P1 separate the state that have conflicting output by inspecting the state table. We find the output for the state A, B, C, E, and F is 0, while the output for the states D and G is 1. So in partition 1, we'll have first partition A, B, C, E, F, where the output is Z, is 0, and D and G is a second partition, second group, where the output is Z is equals to 1, where the output Z is equals to 1. Now, to form P2, we must consider all next states for all possible input sequences for each block in P1. For the block A, B, C, E, F, the next state end of input X0 or zero successors are F, F, C, E, A. Okay. So under X is 0, see we are looking for the 0 successor for A, B, C, E, F. For the A, B, C, E, F, A, we have F, F, which is the same, C, and for E is E, and for F is A. Okay, so what we will get, we'll get FFCEA, FFCEA. This is the zero successor, respectively. And all of the zero successor states are in one block in P1. However, the next state for the block A, B, C, E, F, and the X0, which is the one successor, are B, G, G, D, B. B, G, G, D, B, as we see it. And the, the Z, one successors for the state, we have B for the state A, G, G, for state C, then D for the state E, and B for the state F. So, so the one successors, the one successors will be A, B, C, for the block A, B, C, F, are B, G, G, D, B. Since the one success state are not in the same block, are not in the same block P1, it means that at least one of the states in the block A, B, C, E, F is not equivalent to the others. So we inspect the one success of a state to determine the non-equivalent state. We find the state A and F have the one success of a state B, which belong to one block in P1. Therefore, state A and F from state B, which belong to one block in P1. Therefore, state A and B form a new block in P2. We also find state B, C, and E have a one success state, which is G, G, D, respectively, which belong to one block in P1. Therefore, state B, C, and E form a new block in P2. For the block D, G in P1, the zero successor states are A, F, which belong to one block in P1, and one successor state are B, B, which belong to one block in P1. Two. We conclude that DG should remain in one block in P2. So hence P2 will be AF, BCE, so a one block AF, BCE, and DG. BCE and DG. To form P3, the zero successors of block AF are FA, which are in the same block of P2. While the one successor for the block AF are BB, which are also in the same block of P2. Therefore, the block AF remains unchanged in P3. For the block BCE in P2, the one successors are GGD, 
which are in the same block of P2, while the zero successors are FCE, which are in different block of P2. Since F is uh, the one successor in different block and C is one block, it follows that state B cannot be equivalent to state C and E. Therefore, therefore the block B, C, E, or P2 will be partitioned into two blocks, B and C, E, in P3. For the block D, G, or P2, the zero successors are A, F, and they belong to one block of P2. And the one successors are B, B, and they also belong to one block, therefore, the block DG will remain unchanged in P3. So P3 will be a block AF, B, and C, E, and D, G. C, and D, G. Now, we will be the process to check the zero successor and the one successor for each block in P3. We find that P4 will be A, F, B, C, E, and D, G unchanged. So P since B4 is equals to P3, there is no new blocks are generated. So the process stops and follows that the state each block in the equivalence partition, P4. Therefore, we say A is equivalent to F, C would be equivalent to E, and D would be equivalent to G. And the reduced table will be as shown. A, B, C, D, A, A, C, A, B, D, D, A, and the output 0, 0, 1. And this is will be the conclusion. We can verify that this is the minimal table by inspection. A could be equivalent to B, could be equivalent to C. A cannot be equivalent to D because different output. B cannot be equivalent to D, different output. C cannot be equivalent to D, different output. But for A to be equivalent to B, B has to be equivalent to D. But B cannot be equivalent to D, so therefore A is not equivalent to B. A could be equivalent to C, okay? But to do that, A has to be equivalent to C, and B has to be equivalent to D. B cannot be equivalent to D because they have different outputs, so therefore A cannot be equivalent to C. The same thing with BC. B, for B to be equivalent to C, the successors A has to be equivalent to C, which we proved it to be is not, so therefore B cannot be equivalent to C. Okay, so this is the minimal truth table produced by the partitioning method, and this is, would be the end of this lecture, lecture number 63, which is uh, reducing the state tables uh, using the partitioning method. I thank you very much for listening. Please subscribe by clicking on the blue circle. Sincerely, Dr. Hassan.